Good morning, everyone. It is a little bit past uh, the uh, 10 15 mark. We are at probably 10 25. It just clicked over. And welcome to Culver City Church of God here on the West Coast. We are West, West Coast. And so um, just probably a few 11, 12 minutes away from the uh, LA, Los Angeles, in our, at our east. And so it is good having you with us as we are a few minutes before um, starting our service. If you are on the conference call right now, um, welcome. And we're so glad you're with us also this morning. If you could, especially on the conference call, just kind of look at your uh, phone screen and hit that mute button. and Or you can say hello real quick to people and let them know that you're in. That would be great too because we do have a few minutes. But right around 1030, if you could maybe hit that mute button, your sound quality will probably uh, become much better. Uh, Lauren, she's looking and checking out the sound quality, I believe, maybe. Oh, she muted it. That's see. So someone is listening and, and following directions. She muted it right away. And so if you're wondering if anyone else is on the line besides me, uh, it would be uh, Lauren is also monitoring and, and uh, checking out our live uh, conference call for our congregation, especially for those who um, cannot uh, meet uh, within the building and they don't really have uh, easy access to uh, the internet with Facebook. Um, if you would like, uh, especially on Facebook, if you guys could uh, post some uh, prayer requests. I know I shot out a, a little video this morning earlier on um, with some requests that we have been praying for throughout the week. We continue to pray for those prayer requests, um, and we will. You, you uh, 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 can send a, uh, uh, a thing to the church, call us and um, at our number on our contact, and if you call us and tell us your prayer request, we'll get that out. Also, if you are in the conference call, um, um, I will be getting on the phone after we're done with our uh, live feed with Facebook. And not only will I be getting on the phone, but saying hello to all of our people in our congregation that are joining us on the conference call. And with that, um, you can then even give me some prayer requests or uh, the meeting of your needs. Or you may say this, always add in praise too. We're always looking for praise to uh, celebrate um, we'll be doing that within the uh, next few moments. Um, I do have some praise to, to come uh, your way in conversation. And so um, it is just good having you guys with us. We are about three minutes away from starting live. And so because we are um, not quite starting, I'm going to enjoy a little bit of coffee. And uh, just uh, it, it's not like a first cup. It is more like a fourth cup. And for you guys, that probably explains why he talks so fast sometimes. So I will slow down and uh, allow you all to hopefully have such good sound. We are um, doing different things. I've learned different things throughout uh, the week and stuff. And so uh, just kind of advancing in the technology, how we can reach other people at all times, uh, sharing the good news, sharing uh, the love, sharing and I say the praise of how God is actively involved within our lives. So if you can, go ahead and leave comments, and I will talk to those on our conference call as soon as I'm done uh, with uh, speaking through uh, our service this morning. So please don't go away. Um, you can always, uh, I will recognize you on Facebook also in the fact of getting back to you um, and if you do a, a watch party or something like that, those watch party people can shoot me those comments. That would be great. Or I'll or sh tell me you're doing a watch party and I'll go on your page and I'll see the comments and stuff. It, it is all about connecting and we can do it no matter where we are at in this country or even around the world. I have friends that are around the world. Hopefully you do too. And it's just good to connect with them in all kinds of way. Pick up a phone and talk to them, write them a letter and let them and encourage them or just get on Facebook or Messenger or some of your other avenues of really getting a hold of, of family and friends 
and connect with them. We are about one minute away from uh, getting ready to start. Uh, I see good friends, man. Um, Pekin, I am always praying for you um, and, the, and the churches that are out there. Uh, I came from Pekin, which is in central Illinois. And so very, very, very close to my heart. In fact, there's still some of my family out there in Pekin. And that's not just why I love them. I have good friends that I am. Um, I just want them to know I am always praying, not just for the city, but for you as individuals and some of the things that... Um, touch my heart as you uh, write things, and I um, love seeing them. Um, one of them is a good, good, good friend, uh, Jill. Uh, always praying for her and her family out there in Pekin. Uh, she was, uh, um, and I see Sue just popped on, uh, also from Pekin. Uh, and so I'll tell you what, it is good having you guys with us. The fact that it is 1030 here means it's 1230 there. So I'm well aware of probably some of your uh, services. You're probably now catching into a second service. And here we are at 1030. So welcome to all of you um, that are joining us at this time in uh uh, where we are at, um, and some of them are kind of really cool, um, and I'll get into it just a little bit a, la a little bit later. Welcome to all of you that are on our conference call um, with our church people. It is good having you with us this morning. Please stay on um, later on after we are done talking, and I will talk with you personally. I cannot hear you because I have a, a microphone feed going into my phone, so you're hearing me but I will, at the end, have conversation with you if you stay on the line. Welcome to you in Facebook, um, so across the land. It is so good having you with us. Uh, give a good like and following, and because there's things that are happening, and it's always good to have you share some of our stuff. Just as we share your stuff, please, I do share your stuff and pass along. So share share our stuff here on Culver City Church of God or my personal, uh, Brent Miller, whatever that one is. And uh, yeah, just keep on sharing. And so those that are on the conference call, if you can look at your phone and I believe if you hit your mute button, you'll get even better sound quality with what is happening um, as we are now in service. I'm going to start this week also like I did last week with prayer and so uh, sometimes we change sometimes we have songs first but uh, this week i do want to begin with prayer and so i had sent out on uh, the facebook especially um, some of our prayer requests i have sent it out in emails to those within our congregation on some of the prayers that we have but i'm just going to remind you this morning uh, what we are praying for uh, praying for um, our hospitals, our first responders, um, our doctors, our delivery drivers. I, I see them all the time. It is easy to, I'm one of those when I see it, uh, it, it just rings a bell and I began praying and thanking God as, as he is anointed over the things that are taking place. So our delivery drivers, restaurant workers, man, my prayer has expanded because it has always been about them being able to bring about uh, uh, an income to put food on their table and pay their bills just like everyone else. Praying for our restaurant workers here in the Los Angeles area, um, praise because we are slowly opening up. It is not a speed demon thing, but it is a slowly opening of our restaurants. And so I hope that and continue to pray for those that will be um, uh, touched by individuals. And I mean, as in this, this gentle um, uh, time of coming together in a close proximity when you're eating. I understand that. So we're praying for an anointing over our restaurant and our restaurant workers. Those that are truck drivers, besides the delivery drivers, there are truck drivers across the land bringing stuff across state lines and everything. Good friends of mine driving trucks right now. Um, and so, uh, you know, it, it makes me pray for all the truck drivers, but especially some of them that I know um, in my past for uh, Stuart one. Stuart is one of them that I'm praying for as he is uh, driving across. And always for um, our mail carriers. I know individuals with um, that have been part of our church and the one that comes to our, our step. And uh, pray for this gentleman. I don't know him by name, but boy, he has a soft heart for my grandkids. And um, he's just uh, a smile when he comes by. So I, and that's not the reason, 
but it just reminds me to pray for our mail carriers that are delivering and always continuing to pray for our scientists that are involved in uh, uh, coming up with a cure or a vaccine for what we are in right now with the virus. Be in prayer. There are individuals that we are praying for that are still suffering from cancer. Um, Peter's one of them. There are others that we are praying for that have health issues. Um, Melody in the Philippines, who has a heart condition and a liver condition and also a financial condition. Um, it's hard for her to, the hospital demands a lot of money and, and it's not there right now. So we're praying for her financial needs to be met. There is also uh, individuals that, um, uh, Mary is one of them that we are praying for. Uh, Mary um, is, uh, she has uh, uh, things where she's going to the doctor. And so we're praying for those situations right there. I do have praise in our prayers that we have been going. I prayed for a gentleman who is across our parking lot at the church. I see him all the time. He was in the hospital. Then he was in rehab for delirium. And uh, this week, he is on his perch, which is his balcony overlooking our parking lot. And it was a great joy to, as soon as I saw him, I began thanking God for hearing our prayer and just uh, showing me Yes, your prayer has been answered. He is there on his uh, balcony saying hello. We continue for prayer for all those in our congregation that um, um, need healing also. And your congregations too. We pray God's anointing on those. We pray for those that are in, in home uh, at home because they cannot get out. And by that, I mean that they, um, because of uh, physical or whatever, they need to stay home or they are homebound. We pray for those. And we pray for those that are in our care facilities that God will continue to anoint over them. And I know it's a long prayer list, but uh, we're also praying for, um, uh, last week we prayed for those in the military that had given um, everything as in a memorial. And we prayed for those that have gave their entire life um, so that we could have, especially here in America, freedom and more. And so now we continue, if I may, praying for our military as they are being called out in um, uh, just a rough time, and that's the light word, in our nation where there is a, a need for the National Guard to come out. So we are praying for, um, uh, along with the National Guard, praying for our firefighters, praying for our police departments, and praying in such a way that there will be peace, that there will be safety, that there will be strength, and most of all, that there will be wisdom in all of those situations and God's anointing as we pray not only for those but in the cities that are especially affected um, ours is one of them in the LA and surrounding areas um, so and and I know the with the news in other areas also there is a need and there of praying for our cities praying for our city officials and government officials the same thing wisdom and especially God's wisdom and anointing. Join me in prayer, please. God, you have heard so much, and none of it was, oh, wow, I didn't know about that one. You have known everything, and so we have just voiced it out. We have printed out our prayer requests that we might, as a people, continue to remember these needs, these praises, and that we will continue to have conversation with you, God, and we seek out um, uh, to see how you will answer. And sometimes it is always with great joy and, wow, this is what we wanted and, we, and God answered it. And sometimes you answer in such a way that might be hard for us. God, give us patience. Give us understanding. As we continue to seek you out, we pray that your Holy Spirit will just permeate everything and everyone that has taken place on this planet. I know it's a huge, huge request, but may we seek that out and may we be a part of that answer to prayer. Change our hearts, fill our hearts, and help our hearts that might be a help to all of us as a person. 
God, we thank you for your presence that is always with us. It has never left us nor stopped. God, we ask that your presence will help us in these upcoming moments as we worship you. God, we give you glory in everything that you do. God, we give you honor in our worship. We give you honor in the words that will be spoken. God, you are so good, and we thank you and praise you. In Jesus' holy name, amen. This time I'm going to ask Boomer and, and Lauren to lead us in worship. If you're just joining us, some of the songs I had mentioned it earlier, um, we're going to do, I'm giving you just a few moments as they're getting ready, um, to do I Stand Amazed, or you might know the song also as How Marvelous, and then What a Day That Will Be. Stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. Wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. Lauren to kind of 
listen in on the phone for just a minute. Uh, one of the things that takes place and my, one of my thought processes during uh, this uh, uh, time, I'm, going, I'm giving you a little look there, Miss Daniela. Oh, sounds good. Okay, that's good. Because um, I do believe there are a lot of distractions that take place and are taking place in our time frame. And so um, I, I talked earlier about, oh, I've learned some new things on how to advance and, and get better sound quality and stuff. And uh, one of those things was uh, hooking up our sound system through our conference call. And uh, what took place is my battery turned red, dead. And so I'm running around trying to find, I always thought I had a, a spare. Guess what? No spare. So here we are. Ding, 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 ding. And so for those on the conference call, I am speaking into this, the microphone that, that uh, Boomer just got done using. And well, anyways, distractions, distractions. They are now, well, for a moment. Just for a moment. I uh, titled my uh, sermon for this morning, um, that uh, oh, I stand not alone. I stand not alone. And so um, this week, especially, I think I have been challenged. Um, I have been angered. I have been saddened. I have been distracted. And I have been prayerful. Um, I spoke to a, a friend of mine, a dear friend of mine, and I was talking about these distractions. And for a long time, I had really kind of avoided, um, I, I really don't like that the devil made me do it or anything like that. And so I kind of uh, just uh, um, went ahead and uh, was praying that... Uh, the things that were coming my way were now going to change a thought process of, uh, of uh, the message of the day. One of the reasons was because um, I was going to, and I, I still am, I come on this morning with, um, I had this excitement of, you know what, uh, through talking to our leaders in our church, um, our, our leaders in our Southern California here, and other churches around us. There was legal things, there was insurance things, there was so much involved in uh, uh, just things coming this way. Um, and I say this because of the virus that had really just thrown everything up into uh, turmoil. Um, I began to believe that it is, uh, I know it's a sickness and I know it's, it's hurting and killing, but it became, um, a major distraction in some areas. That's why I pray for those things that we prayed for because um, when distractions come our way, um, we, we tend to look at those rather than what is taking place. And so um, I was excited because in all of that, um, our governor and, and our, our city uh, county thing here in Los Angeles, which is huge, 18 million people in uh, just the county of, of, of Los Angeles. And they lifted restrictions of, of worship. And so we were, actually, we're actually still going to regather next weekend, the first weekend in June. We have met criterias. We have uh, brought the church. And I hope, as you guys are listening, that your churches are doing the same thing, that what we wanted to do is worship safely, and not like under the thumb of the government, but worship safely. And so um, we had to do some things. And so still next weekend on Sunday, now we will be at our regular uh, time of service, which is more of 1045. Um, and I'll be speaking real close to probably the 1115 mark uh, Pacific time. And so we are still going to um, not only regather with those that would like to come and worship within the building that is going to be completely safe, but we are also going to still minister to those who are unable to uh, come into the building and worship. You have to be in a reality. Don't get distracted that there are people that are still going to need to have that connection. So we're still going to do our conference call. Uh, we're probably still going to do our Facebook uh, feed as we minister 
undistracted. But what took place this week, besides that excitement, was what took place this week, where um, uh, in our area, there is uh, a lot of things that are happening and with uh, rioting and uh, stealing and, uh, uh, and peaceful protesting also. You have to see that too. Um, but with that, um, there was things that came across in things that I read, my own personal friends that I have on my list, and I, I mean friends. And then there were those that were, um, where I read, that were connected to people I know. And it was, um, well, let me talk about the challenge. The challenge that came across was speak up. And, and I struggled with, well, how do you speak up? Because um, there was also saying, if you don't stand up and speak, then your silence condones what had been done. And I'm talking about um, what everyone seems to be talking about. And for a moment, I'm going to only just say one. And it is uh, George Floyd and his passing and how that took place um, in a horrific um, uh, uh, killing of that man. Um, and we know this. Uh, if you've been on, you cannot say you don't know the news about that. And so um, the challenge was if I don't speak up, my silence condones what took place. And, and it, it doesn't. I step back and I go, you, you begin um, to question, well, how do I speak up? How will I do it in such a way? Because um, we're in a time frame right now where, um, and man, I'm going to really emphasize, get rid of your eyes of color. But this is what is taking place. So a person of color, and uh, I'm saying it wrong, because when you look at others, you are looking at they have a different color. And so um, me being this color, how do I respond to that where it won't be just words? How do I respond to that where even my actions might be taken? My words and my actions are taken wrong. And, and, and so, and I don't know how to fix that in this moment, but I do know this. I don't mean it for wrong. I mean things to be right. And I'm going to go into that this morning. And I, I hope you'll bear with me because as I was dealing with my heart, because you know what? It, it, it angered me in such a way. I have read um, and I am struggling with Facebook. I'm going to tell you that because it becomes a platform of hatred not by everybody but I'll tell you what you'll see something good and and like I click on the comments and all of a sudden comments go from what was meant for good in conversation to move forward just just the distraction came and it just dissipated into hatred name calling and and just out and out stuff and may I say it this way you don't even know these people, and yet you're, you're compartmentalizing them to where because of that color or that word that they are evil. And it's not like that. Not everyone falls into that compartment, but yet you begin to see it. And so it began to anger me also. So then I began to pray. Um, last night we had um, a, a curfew. And as I watched our mayor, see, like I said, we are just a few miles west of Los Angeles. We're right on the ocean. And so Los Angeles is about 10 minutes, 12 minutes away because there's hardly any traffic. And our church has touched into Los Angeles. And so as Los Angeles speaks, we need to know what's going on. Well, last night uh, we were given a 8 o'clock curfew till 5 30 this morning and it started off being very small in just downtown los angeles then it exploded to the city and then it got recognized it needed to be larger than that because um, it was becoming violent and dangerous in our area so as i prayed i began to uh listen and I meant list, not just, and, and I stepped back and, and, and stopped listening to everything that was presented and began to listen to an answer to my prayer. And then I began to see certain things. I, you know, it comes your way and, and you cry. Maybe, maybe deep down in, your heart just breaks. 
Then there is a time, and I know this for our own family, as individuals are out in this time frame where you begin to worry. And I know a lot of people are going to go, oh, pastor. Oh, and by the way, grab your Bibles or grab your Bible apps because a lot of you will just say right now, oh, do you know the scripture says don't worry? Yes, I do. But I also know that there's sometimes where something happens and all of a sudden your, your emotion becomes a worry. But then, ready, I began to listen again. And as you listen, you, you're still praying, and then you're pausing and listening. And then all of a sudden, you hear. And when do you, what do you do? How do you respond when you hear? Now, I hope you'll bear with me. I ask you to have your Bibles. You might want to just jot down some numbers. I'll actually maybe put them in um, the comments later on uh, this 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 afternoon for me and uh, just of the scriptures that I am looking at. I'm starting off with Lamentations. Lamentations chapter 3, Old Testament, verses 34 and 36. If people crush underfoot all the prisoners of the land, if they deprive others of their rights in defiance of the Most High, if they twist justice in the courts, doesn't the Lord see all these things? As I'm reading these scriptures, this was my prayer. God, do you not see, which I know he does, but as it's written here in Lamentations, it's another heart that's crying out, man, God, do you see what's happening? In Ecclesiastes, I, like I said, bear with me because I'm going to have a lot. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, 16 and 17. In uh, the, one of my translations, uh, the, the New Living Translation, it says this, I also noticed that under the sun there is evil in the courtroom. Yes, even the courts of law are corrupt. I said to myself, in due season God will judge everyone, both good and bad, for all, the, all their deeds. Um, and there was another another version I read. It was the, uh, I believe it's the uh, English Standard Version. And it caught my eye this way because as it was talking about courtroom and court uh, court uh, courts of law, in the English Standard Version it said this, that in the place of justice, even where there, even there, there is wickedness. And this is what caught my eye. And in the place of righteousness, even there was wickedness. And I'm telling you, as I began to pray and, and listen, you've got to understand this. Uh, it, it hit me this way, and some of you might, oh, I, I don't know. In church, there is wickedness. In a place of, and I'm just, you know, you can say, oh, I studied this a different way. I'm going to tell you what, it hit me this way. In a place that we desire as righteous, as holy, and we call sacred, and not idolizing it, but it is a place where we gather, that place has individuals that are, let's just take this time frame, that have a racist heart that have an evil, wicked heart, that have a destructive heart, and they come to this place. Now, I'm going to say this. I hope that they hear and have that heart changed. I hope they see and have that heart changed. But even in these places, there is wickedness. So I continue in my prayer, God, what is going to happen? How are we going to handle this time frame? We are now surrounded with a virus that is, that is, that is just raging through certain things certain uh, ethnicities, certain places, certain, quote, hotspots. How do we handle this? And, I, and I'm going to keep on going. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 14. Our courts oppose the righteous, and justice is nowhere to be found. Truth stumbles in the streets, and honesty has been outlawed. I'm telling you, I'm not going to start just badgering, but what is written here in Isaiah, what is written in Lamentations, what is written in Ecclesiastes, I see things the same happening today. So people are talking about certain hundreds of years, nothing has changed. I'm going to tell you this, thousands of years, nothing has changed. But why? Verse, uh, excuse me, Psalm 82, verse 2. 
how long will you hand down unjust decisions by favoring the wicked? Interlude. Pause. How long is this going to take place where, it, if I may, there is just complete injustice in our decisions? I say that for this reason. I have sat in places of injustice, not as one with injustice, not one with racism, not one with hatred. I mean, I'll tell you what, there has been hatred in my heart. It had to have change. There has been injustice in my heart. There had to be, be change. Uh, there is major uh, bickering, fighting, angry, hateful words if you come up and say, I'm not racist, and you try to prove it. And I'm not going to go there. I'm just going to say, you know your heart, and your heart has to be changed. And it has to be changed even in that place also. Do the courts, are they unjust sometimes? Yes. Um, uh, as a follower of Jesus Christ, I sat on a, on a, in a trial, on a jury, got picked. And I'll tell you what, you're challenged on your walk of faith. I, or, no, I shouldn't say you. I was challenged on my walk of faith. And when you stand strong in your faith, I could be wrong. It was as if I was this Christian token that is on this jury trial. I'm just going to say it that way. In fact, they really didn't want me on the jury jury, but I was this kind of like follower of Christ. You know, how would you, would, would you have forgiveness for this individual and stuff like that? And so it was a challenge. In fact, it was such a challenge when they, when they actually heard my heart, they were stuck and they, they instead of getting rid of me, they kept me, but they really didn't want me. So they kind of, I was alternate, alternate number two. You only had two. And they, they put me at the farthest distance of actually having my heart in this uh, courtroom. And I'm not saying there was injustice there, but I know how things work sometimes, how words are said, and they are unjust. Now, let me go forward with what I think is good. Proverbs verse, chapter 31, verses 8 and 9. Open your mouth for the mute, for the rights of of all who are destitute. Open your mouth. Judge righteously. Defend the rights of the poor and the needy. Now my heart is hearing. Now my heart is hearing. That's me saying this. My heart is hearing. I went to Isaiah chapter 1. Because for me, it is not about holding up a sign. It is not about, um, I'm for protesting peacefully. But I'm going to tell you what, if you truly want change in this nation, look here and take these things and you will see change begin to happen. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 17. It, ready? Learn to do good. Seek justice. Help the oppressed. Defend the cause of the orphans. Fight for the rights of of the widows. See, now we are moving forward. You need to know what to do. Learn to do good. Man, time is ticking away on me. I read a story in Luke chapter 18. I'm not going to read the whole story out. I'm going to just remind you. It was the story where Jesus tells a parable of the persistent widow. He talks about a woman who has come up into a judicial system that is unjust, and she kept pleading and pleading and pleading and going back and going back and going back. And so <clears throat> I began to take it in such a way that, <clears throat> excuse me, that as uh, that she taken her protest right into the courtroom. And so what takes place is this judge finally looks at this woman and changes his mind. And a decision is made and it is made in her favor. And we need to remember this because because this this hit me. Uh, maybe I'll wait till um, later on because it hit me in such a way. Just remember that story 
right there because I, I put it in that spot of, of my text because <clears throat> we have to know that you have the ability to bring what is right in front of people even when they are unjust. And let's see what happens when we do it right. Now, my biggest scripture of the morning, I hope you're bearing with me, is found in Isaiah chapter 58. And I started off personally with just a few verses. And then I went back and went back. I'm telling you, you pray, you pray, you pray, and you listen, and you seek out what God is saying, even as he changes your heart moment by moment. We're in this fast pace, what is happening around us. And so here I am, Isaiah chapter 58. How do I stand up? How do I stand up? Not alone. Shout with the voice of the trumpet blast. Shout aloud. Don't be timid. Tell my people Israel of their sins. Please note this as I read these scriptures. It is not about going and busting up windows and stealing really, 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 really expensive purses and jewelry and clothing and, and televisions. It's not, that's not what this is saying. It is saying about talking about what is unjust, what is sinful. So tell the people of their sins. Yet they act pious. They come to the temple every day and seem delighted to learn about me. They act like a righteous nation that would never abandon the laws of God. They ask me to take action on their behalf, pretending that they want me to uh, be near them. We, In fact, it goes on. It's a quote mark. We have fasted before you, they say. Why aren't you impressed? We have been very hard on ourselves, and you don't even notice it. It's the people talking to the prophet. It's the people talking about relaying this to God. He's not even impressed, and he doesn't even notice what we do. I tell you why is how he responds. It's because you are fasting to please yourselves. Even while you fast, you keep oppressing your workers. What good is fasting when you keep on fighting and quarreling? This kind of fasting will never get you anywhere with me. Wow. Verse 5. You humble yourselves by going through the motions of penance bowing your heads like reeds bending in the wind. You dress in burlap and cover yourselves with ashes. Is this what you call fasting? Do you really think this will please the Lord? No. This is the kind of fasting I want. I'm going to tell you what. Uh, I'm pausing here for a moment because this is where we find out what it really means to protest, what it really means to come out peacefully to change things. Verse 6, this is the kind of fasting I want. Free those who are wrongly imprisoned. Lighten the burden of those who work for you. Let the oppressed go free and remove the chains that bind people. Share your food with the hungry and give shelter to the homeless. Give clothes to those who need them and do not hide from the relatives who needs your help. Then your salvation will come like the dawn and your wounds will quickly heal. Your godliness will lead you forward and the glory of the Lord will protect you from behind. Then when you call the Lord, he will answer. Yes, I am here and he will quickly reply. See, we have to have a changed heart in these last moments. We have to have our hearts changed. If you want, uh, are you ready? If you want racism to stop, this is what the peaceful protesters are protesting. They want this to stop. You will see, um, and I, I'm not a hashtag person, so you won't see it from me, but you do see them. Last one, last one. And I'm going to tell you what, as we journey through history, there's always that sign, last one, last one. But it has not changed because our hearts have not changed and our process has not changed and how we change it has not changed. If we change it, 
there are great results. Psalm 106, bear with me in these moments. Psalm 106, verse 3. There is joy for those who deal justly with others and always do what is right. See, a lot of people, they only want to do it right for this moment. We think we're right for this moment. Then we go back to doing all our evil, doing all our wrong, doing all our distractions, doing all our things that, that do not connect with God, do not walk with God. And we expect God to have that stay changed. And it just does not because our hearts have not changed. You change and you'll find joy. You change, you will be the one who looks at yourself and go, doing right, doing right, doing right. We're a people though, are you ready? We're a people that sometimes because of this time frame it is just like in the scripture. You know what, Paul was persecuted, he was put down, he was, he was not killed yet, but he will be. And when with that taking place, he still writes. And he writes his heart, always trying to change people's hearts. But even in writing, you will see there's a line like, wow, there's humanity. There's this, this hurt. And in 2 Timothy, it comes out and he tells the people, you know what? Me paraphrasing. That man named Alexander the coppersmith. So now you got to realize there's, there's things in order to torch P, uh, Paul. And there's a way to take him down. There's really ways to hurt him if you really want to. That coppersmith Alexander, he did me much harm. Not a little bit. He really brutally, brutally hurt me. But the Lord will judge him for what he has done. Not me. The Lord will. You know, we live in a place right now where there's curfews, there's nasty words that are flying, that are bullets that are flying, both real bullets and, and, and those, uh, I won't hurt you bullets, that they hurt you, they disperse you bullets. There's anger that is rising, and if you look around, it's easy to see, there are flames that are rising. There is justifying, trying to take place, and one of the problems is we try to justify some of the things that are not right. And we need to justify what is right. The mayor, you know what, uh, of L.A., he came out and you, you have to take, listen, but there are some things that pop out. And he did say one thing that was that really stuck to me. And it was this step back, take a breath, come back to peaceful protest, not denying you the opportunity to uh, hold up your sign, but the opportunity to come back and protest. I'm going to close with this. Please do not take it as political. I do not mean it in any way political. But I will say this, because it does not matter, Republican, Democrat, Independent, Socialist, whatever. It does not matter. You keep voting in people that are racist. You, and you know what? Don't go with one man running a nation because that one man comes and goes or that woman will come and go every four years or every eight years. But we put people in place that truly govern the nation and we keep them in there year after year after year after year and we know their hearts. We know their actions are wrong and yet we keep them in there and I'm going to be brutal. Vote them out. And the only way you do that by who you vote out and vote in is to pray, seek wisdom. And by that, I mean, you look at the action. You look up who these people are you are placing in authority. They are the ones that give the response that this is okay. And if you don't like how it is going, then get rid of those that are saying this is okay. And it's not just our politicians that are racist and wicked and evil, and not all of them, I'm not boxing them in. If you look, you'll find the ones that are and get rid of them and get new ones in that are anointed. I'll go that route. And then you'll find not only that, but there are people that are hired as in your, 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 your officers, your sheriffs, your lawyers, your judges, all of those, if they are racist, if they are evil, if they are wicked, if they are doing wrong, then get them fired. Not by busting up a police car. That will not do it. But when you bring the voice in strength, and by that I mean in multitude, to show this is why this person needs to go, then they go. 
The other thing that you can do, and th now I I'm going to tell you this, is uh, as a follower of Christ, boy, know where your heart is because you have got to have, people are going to hate this, forgiveness. People do wrong, but God came to save all. He will judge all, both good and bad, as in the scriptures we read, and I know that, but he still came for all. So you begin to pray at who will lead you forward. You begin to pray. You know, if you're working for a, a racist company, quit. You know what? If some of these platforms that are uh, supposed to allow freedom become plat platforms of hatred and racism, then quit. That, that's how you stand, not alone. And most of all, I'm going to close with this, standing not alone, in all of this, I began praying. Why, why is that? You know what? I got to laugh a little bit because for me, uh, this is how God brings me through things. And if you look at Connie's post, um, Connie, uh, my wife, Connie, she had a post and she was uh, talking about uh, walking with uh, our grandkids. And um, uh, we have grandkids. And, and here's where you know, I said get rid of color. I hate the fact that people look at skin color. And, and why do I say that? Because you know what? Everyone's a human being. And, and when you begin to know that person, the color of their skin does not matter. And so with some of our grandkids, they, they are of color. And now I have to laugh because as Connie's walking with one of our eight-year-old granddaughters, they're discussing things. They just watched the um, Harriet Tubman movie. Here's, here's may, let, me, let me back up. If you want change in the nation, not only are you voting people out and voting in a, 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 a holy movement, not only are you, it's not that you're trying to get people fired, but you want people of leadership that are leading in a holy, righteous, justified, holy way. I'll keep, I got to go holy all the time because that's what will get rid of racism. And when you stop looking at just articles and postings and really walk, uh, start doing you'll see a change. And so one of the things that you personally must do is raise up the generation that is not racist. Raise up a generation that is not hateful. Raise up a generation that has the love of God and you will see change as it passes generation to generation. Some of you are going to sit there and say, well, I don't have no kids with me now or I don't have nothing uh, 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 these with me now. Guess what? You change and, excuse me, because you're not the one changing. It is God that is changing. You lead and teach your friends, your workers, your older family members that these things are not right and hearts will change. That is what God will do. And so, yes, you have a personal um, thing to do with change. So as I get ready to close, so Connie is walking with our eight-year-old daughter, our granddaughter, and they had saw the Harriet Tubman movie. And uh, she began to, you, you got to go read the post because it's, it's great. Um, it talks about uh, separation. And this, this eight-year-old, she was like, wow, uh, Momo, that's what she calls Connie, Momo, uh, you won't be able to be, because they talked about slavery and if it came back or stuff like that. If that happens, then you won't be able to be with me. And, oh, wow, you won't be able to be with Sophie, her sister, or with, with Elijah, her brother, all of color. And uh, then she goes, oh, wow, Mama, you won't be able to be with Papa. <laughs> and she's like, what? Why is that I can't be with Papa? And she goes, ready? You got I have to laugh. I laugh. I don't care if you don't laugh or not, really. But I laugh. Because Papa, he's darker in tanning than Elijah is. <laughs> so he's going to be with us. And so, you know what? It's just the way it is. I'm a person of, uh, of, of, you know what? I go outside and, and I do, my color does change. It gets a lot darker. And uh, may I say this? Many, many years ago, back in the middle 80s, 
Um, I had struggled with some really bad skin problems on my knuckles, especially my elbows. And I went to a doctor and they finally said, you have psoriasis. And you have this one kind of psoriasis. And here was, here was my, uh, here was my, uh, 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 what, what do you call it? You get a prescription. Go to a tanning booth because those UV, UV rays will heal you. And I was poor back then. And so I did not go to a tanning booth. We paid our rent and we, and we ate instead of me going to a tanning booth. So I, I, my only way to get UV rays was ready outside. And so when I get tan, my skin feels great. I love that our beaches are open because my skin feels great. God hears a cry and he heals. Those are my actions. And so I laugh at that. But here's a young lady who's eight years old. Who's, who sees that people make something of color and it shouldn't be. And let's change our hearts that it shouldn't be and that we can change it by our words and our actions. Let it start with us. So glad you were with us. I'm sorry I went a little bit longer than usual. Um, my heart was heavy and, and now I am enlightened. Um, so uh, I do know that... Uh, uh, God is at work. And so be with us next Sunday. Now, next Sunday is going to be a time change. We're going to do about 10, it's 1045 is when we actually start our service in the building. Praise the Lord. I'm excited. And so we will be gathering with those that would like to gather. There are restrictions and, and policies, and I will be shooting all those out so that we are, um, staying healthy because you know what it is about us being healthy as a people too and so we're going to do that safely next sunday 10 45 um i will probably be bringing the word around 11 10 11 15 that's probably when it's going to click on facebook um we'll see how that goes um like i said earlier on i was like oh look what i can do and then uh, batteries went dead so we'll see how that goes next sunday 10 45 on our conference call and 10 45 or 10 11:15 uh, ish for Facebook. Um, as always, if you can support our ministry as we support those that are with our ministry and the things that are going to be taking place, which continues. See, that's the thing. Nothing stops God, and it continues. If you can support us, boy, we would greatly, we do greatly appreciate it. Um, I will always say this: if you are where you are at and uh, and have your own home church, support your ministries. See what your church is doing and support and be a part of what has taken place there. As God's anointing and listen and you will see great things. You can always go to, uh, I'll have to double check it. It looked like I had a problem, but it was up for a while and now it might got dinked a little bit. Our website, culvercitychurchofgod.org. You can always check us on Facebook. Our Facebook is Culver City Church of God Ministries. Um, you can check us out there. And uh, give us your prayer requests, your praises, your needs, and we will do our best to continue to minister to you. Always asking God to bless you, and not just in these times, but always. God bless everyone. If you are on our conference call, just stay with me for a moment, and I would love to say a good